what is going on guys it's your boy Sessa here bringing you guys yet another Photoshop tutorial continuing on with these very nice cool banner tutorials today we're going to be teaching you a nice 2D banner tutorial on how to use you know CC's and pictures together something along that that's how I'm going to title this video but basically making a nice banner with pictures and creating these pictures blending them together very well and then putting this CC on it that looks very very godlike and just basically creates the banner itself so of course very simple stuff going on right here very nice subtle uh, stocks in the background nothing crazy uh, pictures were the background itself I would say and then one nice main picture with a nice simple text uh, you know placement with a nice very simple CC or excuse me a nice not complicated font but more of a uh, or a character font something that's not so clean but has this like its own like little you know just character to it so with that being said if I were to change something around this banner it would be the font right now the T looks like an R for anyone who has no clue who adapt would be they'd be like who's a dapper you know you know whatever so I would fix the T I will do that in today's tutorial though so all that being said don't forget to like the video guys 200 likes on this video you can see it down below all that crazy stuff like I said before we're doing a lot of all about CC on this video today so if you want to see this without the CC look at this it's a completely different banner you can you really can't say this looks even close to remotely good without the CC being on it so like I said please pay attention to this uh, tutorial today because we're gonna teach you a lot about CC's and blending stocks together let's get going all right so in this uh, tab right here I have everything I did use in this banner right here because like I said I want to focus on the text as well just because I didn't focus on it on any of my other tutorials I don't really focus on showing you guys how to place this text uh, this text together so I will show you guys how to do all that crazy stuff because I do have it in this little PSD let's get going into tutorial now so like I said the font the font is what really kind of like makes the banner itself as well so if you have a really nice character font maybe like something like this this is devil breeze so let's go let's get up let's get going so, all right so a devil breeze something that, like impact would not work for this just because it's not it's clean you know maybe not so much clean try to find a font that looks very good it's not too crazy like comic-y but it looks very very nice maybe maybe this one just because it's clean but it's bold it has this different character to it but something like this like nexa bold or something i'm not quite sure if it'll work if i had this font with this you know this banner and how it, it goes really i really can't so i have devil breeze what i use for that so i'll use it again why not um put this on bold so like i said i want to change the t because i'm not quite sure if i like this t and how it goes so to edit it simply you can do this as well i will show you guys really quick i'm going to delete it out of my main font or out of my main text i'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this by holding alt and shift and moving it over and then i press t again so this is my t now and now it's own little separate thing and I, like i said you can do this for yourself as well but i'm just going to try and do this really quickly is edit this t with a rectangle marquee tool and what i'm going to do is try to fix this t just make it a little longer over here why not if i need to fix this transform selection maybe something like that why not right and now on this new layer that I have here, let me make sure I have the same color selected. Alt backspace to quick fill. There we go. We have a T going now. I, I made this longer on purpose. If I want to fix it, I can just cut it out with the rectangle market tool and press delete if I want to. I'm going to leave it just a little longer for now. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to try and match the spacing, which I believe this is probably like, what, five pixels, four pixels, one, two, yeah, like four, five pixels or so. I'll try and match that over here. So I'll say something like that is around where that is. Maybe one tick over. Anyway, I'm gonna select this a thumbnail with holding control so I can select this new that that shape we just made. I'm gonna go to select, modify, expand, and I'll do it by two pixels. And I'm gonna right click rasterize this type on the text and delete it. So now we have our T looking a little bit better than what we have over here. Like I said, this is what how I'd go about making the text a little bit better, but I don't want to do that crazy right now. I'm not going to try and fix it too much, but I like this right now for how it stands and how it looks right now. That's just how it's going to be. All right. We can group that together now and call this Adapt. And once we're done with this, we can actually add the sponsor logos to this now. Uh, like I said, I want to show you guys how I set this thing up. So for the sponsor logos, this can be your sponsor logos if you have any sponsor logos, or this can be your social media where your social media goes. The trick to this is just to space them very nicely. I space them with like... A, uh, maybe like a centimeter or half a centimeter just apart perfectly it'll look very very good it will just show off what it needs to show off it can be small like this because no matter what 
it's a logo. It's it's seeable. It's visible. If you even saw this from like mile, I right, whoa. If you saw this from like ten feet away, and it's very small, I'm pretty sure you can pick up the color, the shape. You know, it's just like that general knowledge of you already know what that logo is. So it doesn't have to be crazy big. So with that being said, we'll just add on the other two logos to this really quickly, and like so. This is a DAPS logo. This is Phase logo. And with all that, we just obviously going to put use code DAP for the sponsors below, and we'll use this with a clean font. Why not? Any like additional information you can use a clean font for, but just have the text uh, of its of its person's name just be like you know its own solo font that looks very very nice. And we'll just make sure this is small. Boom, something like that, and this will work. And this is how I would basically set up my text for this. So. With all that being said, I'm pretty sure we're able to just fix this space or nope, fix where this goes now. Uh huh. All right, that looks good for now. So there, boom, got the text all going, and we'll just name this text. So now we don't have to worry about this anymore. All right. Now the pictures, after this picture we're going to put in, we're going to actually do the CC then afterwards. So we're going to use the same exact picture I use over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to pictures used, and we're going to use this one. Now, for anyone who has a grainy photo, or if their photos they take of each other, because they are, if they take of yourself to actually put on a banner or other people's photos, whatever you find them on Google, whatever you may be, if it's not HD, there's a very nice way to make it look a little bit better or very a little bit more higher quality. So I did it to this photo already. But in pictures like, let's just say, in pictures like, yeah, da, 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 da. Mm, I want more something like noticeable. <laughs> Funny picture. All right, a picture like this, adapting his girlfriend. You see how the picture is, you know, it's, it's it looks clear, but it's very grainy or noisy. And for this as being, it's just the picture's low quality or it's exported somewhere else and just it loses quality. Anyway, go to filter, oh, excuse me, Get this filter called uh, Topaz and Topaz Labs. It's Topaz Labs and it's called uh, Filter or uh, Topaz Denoise Five. This filter right here is a very, very, very nice filter for anyone who has pictures that are low quality or grainy, like I said. So you can see the picture right here. It looks fine, but the quality can be a lot better. So with this Denoise Five here, I'm just gonna put my overall strength up. So this is what it looks like now. A very grainy fo uh, photo right now. If I just put my strength up, everything gets very nice and smooth. You can see that there. It's grainy when I move it around. If I stop, it gets smooth. I press OK, and it's a very nice way to keep this very consistent looking, you know, HD background going on. So, with that being said, if I just went Control Alt Z, showed you guys with before the uh, filter being applied. This is without the filter, and this is with the filter, without it, with it. So you can see the very big difference. And like I said, please use it if you guys can get your uh, hands on that filter. Please go do so. You probably just Google. Uh, Topaz Labs Denoise 5 in Google and find it that way. All right, well, that being said, that's how you would do your main photo. I already have the Denoise 5 on applied to this already. I don't want to do it too much because it looked very cartoony. We don't want that. We just make we just want to make it look a lot better. So now I can just put this now picture in this banner. I'll just lower this down. Uh, what I did there, if you, if you really don't know how to control shift or uh, to transform, control T to free transform and then hold shift, hold the right corner, click it. And holding shift will keep the the dimensions and very you know it won't like do this and mess it up. If you hold shift, it will automatically fix it for you and make it perfect when you shrink it. All right. Um, maybe just a little bit more. Why not? And boom, there we go. Nice little placement there. So what I did on my previous tutorial, or I like I told you, we're getting off of how we did our. Denoise, uh, our tear effect tutorial and our advertising banner tutorial. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select, uh, I'm gonna make everything black and white besides one selective color like I did over here, which was his headset in this case, which played off of you know his headset you know coming off of this very nice tearing effect. The tears being you know particles and its replacement to make this nice simple stock in the background and playing on these only three colors, which would be I would say white, red, and this very nice tated, uh, just faded blue, I guess. So. With that being said, to do this, it's very simple. We're going to make a new layer with Control shift n for the new layer shortcut. Press OK right over this uh, new picture we have here. We're going to take a brush. We're going to lower the, the diameter a little bit. So I'm holding a Control alt right-clicking and moving it left and right to lower my diameter. And then we're going to put our harness all the way up. Or you can just press Control alt and move up, or excuse me, down to put your harness. But 
There we go. Make this black. Just make a nice black, mm, black brush. And like I said, you can pencil this out. I said this previously in my other tutorial. You can pencil this out, but it's very quick if you have just a nice steady hand and if you surely can just, you know, go over only the spots you need to. So we're just going to go over everything besides his headset. And we're going to make everything else black and white. All right. We can make a smaller brush if we need to. Uh, -huh. Simple, simple, simple. All right, cool. Let's go. Come on, come on. Uh -huh. uh, that looks fine. That looks fine. All right. So once you've done that, you can right click on this uh, the brush layer you just did and press clipping mask. And then once you've done this, you can go to your layer style and just change it to hue. And what that'll do is make it black and white. And if you can just to make it everything, if you want to fix something, you just go back to your brush and then erase where you don't want it black and white, or just go back to your brush then, and then just color it in to make everything, you know, or excuse me, use your brush to make things black and white. And if you don't like something, if you went over something, you can erase it to change it. You know what I mean? So there, that's how it goes. Uh, I'll fix just a little bit. Oops, use wrong one. Uh huh. I'm gonna change this. Erase this so it turns red. All right, cool. All right, boom. So when I did this, I went to just simply enough under my layer clip mask. I'm gonna just use my hue and saturation. And now, if you wanted to do this, you can change it to any color you want. I just want to change it to more of a darker red. So I'm just gonna move this to the left a little bit more, or right. Which way is it? It's probably just the left. Yeah, just a little bit to the left. And we put our CC on it. It'll look a lot better. All right, cool. We've done all this now. We can work on the CC now before we put all the other background stocks on this. So, move this over just a little bit. All right, the CC part. This is this is the main part here to make this banner look very nice. So, we're gonna make a nice little group here. We're gonna call it CC. And with this being that, we'll just go ahead and go start off with it now. All right, so I always start off with a curve. And the curve itself is just a very simple little s i say this all the time because it just makes a little bit it makes everything pop out the way it's supposed to i believe and if you have any other curves to start off with you can try that as well i'm not you know criticizing this is just how i would do it boom once i've done this curve a nice little simple s we're going to use the exposure again because exposure looks very very good with black and white and maybe even one select the color like i'm doing today so exposure we can put our exposure up just a little bit i'll say it about 20 and our offsets what we got to change not too much, but our gamma correction as well needs to be changed. Now we can fix this at any moment we want. I'll just leave it like this for now. This looks okay. What we're gonna do now is gonna we're applying a gradient map, which is how we're gonna get this blue tint here, but not just like this. You'll see how we go about it and how it works. So double click on here to change your colors. We're gonna change this first color to a nice dark blue. Uh, this can be anything. This this dark blue can be represented as a uh, dark orange. And then for your corresponding color, I'm going to use green. But if you're using a dark orange, you can use like a, a very vibrant red. Whatever it may be, you can try, it's trial and error. You can always change this at any moment you want. But when you do have these two corresponding colors to each other, make sure this middle color is a very dark color. And just so we can have his face and stuff, you see how this like, you know, if this is white, you wouldn't be able to see his face. We need a dark color in the middle to make a nice definition to the CC. Or the the gradient map itself so once you've done that you press ok we're gonna change this to lighten which is why am I tripping out alright there it is and we're just gonna change this down to about maybe 10 10 percent 10 percent looks okay you can see how it looks very it looks very a dimmy blue right now that's okay once you've done this we can add another curve just so we can keep this maintaining this nice little dark CC here a little bit all right now we're gonna add just another curve reason for this is this is a curve that's gonna be used to actually make a nice little subtle blue a very nice chill looking blue so on this RGB here we're gonna change this to blue and your lines gonna gonna be blue what you're gonna do now is you're gonna simply just drag this down about halfway the the one to the right this little notch to the right and this little left one we're just gonna drag it to about 25% of the way and this makes it like a very nice chill looking blue it looks very good if we just lower this normal down to maybe We'll say 15% to be fair for now. And then once we have this here, we could add a mm, brightness and contrast. Why not? 
we can add this put the contrast up just a little bit that looks okay and then last but not least let's put a photo filter in which would be over here double click on this nice dark blue here and that's what gives us that really nice blue that we are looking for and all that being combined it looks very very nice so there's your CC where it has very nice subtle blue I'm not quite sure if I would use hue and saturation to try and change the color because it would also change the the everything else that has color with it so if you want to change the color change your photo filter uh, maybe delete this one curve with the blue uh, you know blue correction here and then just change your gradient map to change your other color as well with that being said the CC is now done we can apply the other background images now uh, which are right here and if I were if, if what I showed you guys before if you have any gradient noise on your your other pictures fix them with the filter uh, Topaz Labs denoise 5 please do that it is worth it but we're gonna put this in the background now so all right let's move each one over here just so you can see what we're working with uh, number three let's just put that over there why not Number four can be placed right there, and then the number five can be placed like right here. Just all of his friends, something like that, or and his girlfriend, of course. Um, is this number two right? All right. So the way I do this is just simply make a nice, a simple, take your eraser, and then with a zero hardness brush, just erase the corners like this, just to blend them in nice and well. Now, if you want to, you should erase the other one, the other corner that leaks into the other picture. So this one would be this one, or this one would be the leaking picture to this one. And it's just a nice better transition there. So once we've done that, we're going to do this to all of them. Uh, i got to do it to this one, of course. It's friend Mo. And erase this over here a little bit. You can move Mo over a little bit. Why not? Oop, that wrong picture. Uh... Oh wait, excuse me. I like erased part of the picture. I want it. Oops. Let's take this and shrink this down a little bit. Put them both in. Why not? Uh, just something like that. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Erase that, and then we'll erase the corner over here. And like we'll combine these together. Nice little transition there. And then the last picture, you just erase this corner here and boom that's good so a simple transition there we're just erasing the corners and then once we've done all that we can group these uh pictures together with uh, all control g when we select them all with shift so click on the first one hold shift click on the last one control g and like i said try not to like change the the what do you call it the the size of them the pictures because you also lower the quality as well just use multiple ones to cover the uh the banner itself or use one very nice uh, big one which would be like any picture taken with like a very nice camera with like you know 1080p it would be able to fit this entire this entire banner um so just use one picture if you could use multiple if you want it's just all personal preference and then with this group here we're just going to change the the blend mode to luminance uh luminancy and we're just gonna load the opacity down to a fair amount we'll say 25 for now and then to basically like try to start cleaning this up a little bit uh, maybe below the CC, make a new layer with a nice zero hardness brush. So we're going to lower the hardness, move our mouse up with the control alt and right clicking. Make sure the diameter is pretty good. Zoom out just a little bit with alt and scroll wheel. And we're going to click one nice little time with a white brush on the top to give this better look to it. It looks okay, right? We're looking good. We're looking good. Now, if at any moment we don't change the CC, we could, I want my thing to be a little more darker maybe I gotta change my contrast a little bit my contrast needs to be like a little more darker for me and maybe even this curve mm hmm looks a little bit better like I said just experiment with the CC itself it's the it's the CC this entire CC that makes the entire banner so please experiment with it right now I'm okay with it I'm not too happy with it but what's also messing me up is the picture over here I feel like it's a little too much, so I'm going to put a curve on it right below the other hue and saturation. I'm going to fix it up just a little bit. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? All right. So 
what I did here was I just basically finished it off with, you know, using the distort effect in the background. Yeah, the CC is really annoying me, but I'm trying not to, like, worry about it. We're going to use a nice copy of it. I'm going to make another copy just in case. And we're going to go ahead and add the little stylized wind. Stagger effect. Press OK. And then we're just going to move it over a little bit. Um, before we do that, then. Before we do this, we're going to combine all these things together. So Control G. Make this duplicate. And then Control E to merge it. This will be the picture now. Now we'll do this. Delete that one. This is just a backup or something because I messed this up. Now we go to filter, stylize, wind, stagger, OK. Move this over maybe. And then maybe go to filter, distort, ripple. Change this up a little bit. Large. Boom. And then once again, select, stylize, wind, stagger. Now this is just effects you can put in the background at all points. Whatever you want to do. That's how you just want to do it. Um, that looks fine, right? That's pretty good. All right, cool. So, it's just annoying me. I'm gonna put another CC a curve above it. Let me see if I can fix it. It's just not dark enough for me. Uh, sure. Right? Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. Anyway, so for any of the little particles I have here, you can use anything. Make your own brush stocks. I have another tutorial on that as well. If you want to learn how to make brushes like this, um or you know stocks like this I, I'll put that uh, tutorial in the description below just in case you want to watch it but I do already have this stock that I use for that here so I believe I used this one for the color so if I just put this over here below everything and I believe what this is going wrong here is because of my exposure is not dark enough uh, sure all right <laughs> it's just gonna know me the entire time I'm sorry anyway with the stock, which is right here, I'll put this below everything, and we're going to select it, we're going to select the color overlay, and we're going to change it to this color over here that's going on, and with that, press OK, and then with this, we'll just move it around just a little bit, and then we'll just duplicate it again, put it over here, why not, and then with that, I ended off with this other stock right here, and by the way, these two stocks right here are going to be on my new pack, so these are like the, the, the what do I call them, the particles of them. So, with that being said, if you're looking for stocks like this, they will be my newest pack. Uh, boom. There we go. Now, to clean this up, I would basically try to figure out where I can put some light effects, which is like a nice soft brush I can put some light effects at. Maybe over here, over here. I'm not quite sure. Lower the opacity down. Try different blend modes. Maybe even go for another uh, big, very big brush on the top. Why not? Let's see what that looks like. It might look dumb. It might look good. We don't know. Uh, it looks pretty dumb. No. So we're not going to do that. So with all that being said, really what just needs to happen right now is just to fix the CC. But all that can be done on your own time. Just trying to fix what's going on. What's going wrong. Is it this? Is it this? Whatever it may be. Just trying to fix it. Just, and then you can get something like this. Looks really good, right? So... Thank you guys so much for watching today's tutorial. It was probably a little bit longer because we, we had we we really focused on the CC there, and I went wrong at some like some parts where I don't really you know feel comfortable with it. I don't want to waste too much time, like I said, trying to fix it. So on my own time, if you still copy this uh this setting, you'll still get a very nice clean setting with this. But there's just something that's just missing. It's going wrong. I might have just did something a little bit differently. I might have just lower my opacity a little bit too much on one other thing. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it was this. Maybe not quite sure. I'm not. I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, guys. Don't forget to comment down any tutorial, uh, any tutorial you want to see me do. Uh, please do so. Please, please. And also follow me on Twitter at SysWHQ. Please check out my self store, my graphics store, selfie.com. So SysWHQ for any pre-mades and packs as low as five dollars. You can purchase my everything pack for thirty dollars and get everything in my store, everything in it for thirty dollars and anything that comes out for free. Email to you like my experience pack if you were to get that. Uh, everything pack you will get my experience pack free when it comes out through an email so thank you guys so much for watching thank you thank you thank you also did i already like say thank you for 35k like yeah we did hit that i'm not quite sure if i said thank you maybe i did the last video thank you guys for that as well period point blank period guys we're done thank you guys so much that's what you out peace